So I found a look in a magazine that I want to recreate for a new series, create this look that we're gonna start doing. And I had to think, what do I have in the barns? This piece right here is perfect. It looks similar to the piece in the magazine. I just need to figure out how Zeb can add a door. The nice thing is it's super thick right here so we can add hinges um, and it's already got shelves. So we just need to find something for the door. Zeb told me that I can move this by myself so I'm gonna see if he can move it by himself. You totally could get this. But how many repairs would you have to do if I moved it? Maybe a couple. So we have this pile here and I thought about using this door, but it's way too wide. Much to probably my sister's chagrin because she gave me this door. I'm gonna cut this door down because it's the exact perfect door. So I'm gonna get started painting this and Zeb has to figure out how he's gonna make his cuts because he's gonna make his cuts here and I'm gonna paint it at the house. You got it? I got it. Look how tall I am. I'm on a stool. Okay, so we're trying to recreate the look in the picture. The picture is not bright white, but crinoline is way too yellow. So I'm thinking 50-50 white swan to crinoline, which is good because I'm almost out of crinoline. Probably this is gonna make tarnished pearl. But it's all right. Let's put this next to crinoline. Don't you think that's better? Can they even see? Yeah, they can see. Yeah, so this is gonna be much closer. It's a nice cream, not quite so yellow and brown as this. So this is crinoline, 100% crinoline, and then this is the mix that Jamie just made. What's the ratio again? Two parts white swan, one part crinoline. For me, I can't even see the top, unless I'm on a stool. It's like eye level for you. I'm just gonna get some paint on there. So we're getting ready to cut the door to fit into that shelving unit that Jamie's painting right now. And I want to leave this knob on here and that can just be, it's got a really cool plate and lock. I'm starting to wonder if this door wasn't held together by old gross paint. The more I chip off, the more things are exposed. So I'm just gonna keep working on it. This chisel seems to be working. The best is kind of scrape at it and get these bubbles out and the loose paint. And then we will give it a new fresh paint job. Zeb, you're gonna do that in the house? Yeah, well I got <laughs> it in here and I was like, oh, I need to touch up a little bit. You were making fun of me for buying these old antique block planes, but look, I got this one sharpened up and it's gonna flatten this out right here where the saw made a little zigzag. A ziggy zaggy? Yeah. And you're gonna fix my vacuum because I'm gonna need it. No, I'm not getting any mess. It's all going up into the block plane. All right. The wood's wet, so it's just kind of gumming up in there. All right. The hinges are going on, and this is how we see if we did our math correctly. Because you can't, <laughs> it's hard because you have to leave a little bit of room for the hinges. And you have to leave a little bit of room for the latch, but not too much room. I'm going to put the other hinge on. I'm going to just commit, and then we'll sand as needed. All right, so you're you're out over here hanging on to this. Okay. You got me to just. Oh, you dropped it. It got distressed. Okay, you want to go? Oh, it's heavy. Yeah, the door is heavy. That might be a problem. Got to anchor it. So the depth on this is not super deep and the door is really heavy. So whoever buys it is definitely going to have to anchor it in and we will make sure that they know that. The door was a little bit yellow, so I'm just coming in and... It actually looks really good on camera now that you put a little bit of a brush on there. Yeah, I'm just adding a little bit of watered down, left it mostly watered down because we're out of paint, and just kind of dry brushing it, not getting full coverage, and then we'll come in and seal it all up. Because I don't want to lose all of the chippy. Well, the wood looks good around all of the detailed trim. I'm wet distressing and wet, getting back to that original red color, but it's not really reading as red. It's more just like a dark undertone. It just looks brown. Yeah. It's like a mahogany red. Like a mahogany, only hopefully no bleed through. And then the inside's gonna be the best part, so you get to do that. All right. <laughs> 
So we did paint the inside, but we're really only gonna worry about distressing the top because you won't see the bottom. But that beadboard looks so good distressed. Also the corbels, look at that. Yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> can you say yummy for distressing? I think so, it can be delicious. It's delicious chippiness. We are using Sweet Pickens Final Finishes in Satin. You could also use DIY's Big Top, just as easy. This is just what we happen to have on hand. This is nice because we'll be able to put a coat on here and it's good to go. Um, do be careful that if you have something that can bleed through because that can happen when you do a sealer, but um, I really like it. And do not overwork the paint because this is water-based, which means that when you put it on a water-soluble paint, if you overwork the paint or push too hard, you can pull the paint off. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna be done before you with this big brush. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Just don't get any drips with that big brush. I told you it might be harder to control. Nope. This is thinner than the paint. No big deal. It's just going right on nice. We having a race? I'm always racing. You're just hungry, you want lunch. <laughs> One swipe. Yeah, but I'm getting all the cracks. This gets in the cracks? Well, it also uses a lot of sealers. Yeah, that's why I'm loading it once and You're coming. missing the cracks. I'm gonna get this I'm one. coming in here to get them. Yeah, you're missing like a lot on the sides here. I think it's because I needed to reload. It's fine, I'll get it. You got the bulk of it on there and I'm just doing perfection. Jamie, what are you doing? I'm um, holding this piece all the way to the shop. I gotta get buckled up though. It's raining a little bit and the finish is so fresh. We're just gonna drive to the shop slow and uh, you know, it'll be all right with the back open. It's fine, I got this. Okay, so while Zeb's getting these shelves in, I have realized I have yet to paint the stairs. So next week, watch for a stair painting and banister video because they look real janky next to this really cool cabinet. And this is one piece and half a door out of the garage. I have the glass right here. All right, guys, it is in the shop. It's staged. It's not exactly like the picture that we had in the magazine, but I think we did pretty great. You know, we had a random piece in the barn and we went and grabbed an old busted door that was out in the snow and the rain and it turned into this. I think it did awesome. Comment below with more ideas that you'd like in this series for making it look like a magazine. Visit jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products used today. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.